nationwide on 17th of April. Uh, speaking of films, the world of pirate radio in the 60s is the inspiration for Richard Curtis's latest comedy, The Boat That Rocked. It came to us last week, of course. The most famous pirate station radio, Caroline, still exists, although now it broadcasts legally from dry land. But there are plans for it to take to the water once more. Breakfast Tim Muffet's been finding out why. <laughs> Exciting, illicit, pirate radio transformed broadcasting. By transmitting from international waters, the likes of Radio Caroline and Radio London brought 24-hour pop and rock to the nation. Unheard of in 1964. The whole concept is celebrated in the new film, The Boat That Rocked. And by hook or by crook, they'll find a way to close us yeah, down. Yeah, they can't close us down. We're pirates. Radio Caroline. Radio Caroline is still going. It now legally broadcasts from studios on land via the internet and satellite. But there is something missing, one of these. Despite the fact that legally or technically there is no need to broadcast from a boat, many people are still desperate to do it. But why? Peter Moore will tell me. He's Radio Caroline's current boss. The boat is the Ross Revenge, the last one to be used by the station. Work's been going on for years to restore it so that it can return to the water and the station can try and recapture its glory days. You have been watching some archive footage of Radio Caroline. Coming up now, the man who presently runs the station with a soundbite. If you look at conventional radio, the DJ will turn up, go to his pigeonhole, get his post, do his programme, go to his car, go away again. But when you concentrate broadcasters on a ship, there's nowhere they can go. They've got to socialise together. They're immersed in music. Yes, we're going to put the... But isn't that whole style of broadcasting now a bit naff? The crazy characters and cheesy jokes? So, nice boat, isn't it? Port, starboard, aft, not aft. Radio's undoubtedly developed over the years. Um, we hope we developed over the years. To put this vessel at anchor and use it in the way that it used to be used would produce very good music radio. <laughs> The impact pirate radio had is today hard to appreciate. Listeners loved it. Politicians, including a young Tony Benn, hated it. The pirates are a menace, and I don't believe at all that uh, the public wouldn't support action to enforce the law. There was an enth a genuine innocence and enthusiasm about what they were offering, which was this, 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 this the, that you had the right to listen to this music whenever you wanted to and that it would be the thing that would change your life. Many believe pirate radio died the day Radio 1 was born. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to the exciting new sound of Radio 1. Caroline's current boss believes the station can recapture its old magic, but to do it, they're going to have to get back on the boat. Tim Muffet, BBC News. I was it's unable to listen to that last time. Somewhat distracted. Because look, look what we got. We got scones and we got fruitcake and all kinds of other lovely stuff. And it's all made with four ingredients or